I am Dr. Rahul Modi, Assistant Professor in Department of Pathology, Government Medical College, Surat, and I will be teaching you chronic inflammation today, that is in continuation with the chapter Inflammation and Repair. Uh, in the previous two lectures, we have learned about uh, acute inflammation. Uh, in the last lecture, I taught you about the mediators, chemical mediators of acute inflammation. And today, the topic is about chronic inflammation. So what is chronic inflammation? Inflammation of prolonged duration that can last up to weeks, to months, to years. And where active inflammation, tissue injury and healing proceed simultaneously. That is chronic inflammation. It is characterized by the infiltration of the mononuclear cells. And these cells are plasma cells, macrophages, lymphocytes, and sometimes eosinophils. In uh, inflammatory process, in this kind of inflammatory process, there is also uh, simultaneously there is tissue destruction. There is also repair, and the repair is involving new vessels that is called angiogenesis and fibrosis. So simultaneously, all these activities are there in chronic inflammation. That is infiltration of the cells, tissue destruction and repair. Destruction and repair is going simultaneously in chronic inflammation. So this is a morphological, uh, microscopic morphological picture of chronic inflammation. There are the mononuclear cell infiltration mainly, no neutrophils. There can be plasma cells. This is again a picture with abundant plasma cells in chronic inflammation. Now, in which conditions there is chronic inflammation? Mainly in the viral infection, the intracellular infections invariably renew lymphocytes and macrophages to eradicate the, to eradicate the virus. Some microbial infections like uh, tuberculosis, uh, Trypanoma pallidum that is in syphilis and all evoke a delayed hypersensitivity re response which ends in a granulomatous reaction. So that now this granulomatous reaction is also a particular type of chronic inflammatory process that we will see in this lecture too. The prolonged exposure to toxic agents, the inert materials like silica that is in silicosis and Atheroma, that is in atherosclerosis, that is due to the lipid component. So this prolonged exposure to the toxic agents can also cause the chronic inflammatory process. In certain autoimmune diseases, there can be chronic inflammation. And that is mainly due to the immune response to the own tissue. That can occur in rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. In certain fungi like actinomycosis, blastomycosis and cosidiomycosis, in this kind of fungal infection, there can be chronic inflammation. Now, which are the main inflammatory cells in chronic inflammation? So these are the cells. First is macrophages, very important in chronic inflammation. They are the mainstay. They are derived from monocytes and present in blood after they immigrate out from bloodstream. They are also present normally like cough cells in liver, reticulum cells in spleen and sinus histiocytosis in lymph nodes. In uh, brain, central nervous system, microglial cells in lungs, alveolar macrophages are there. So these are the macrophages in certain organs. And what is the function of these macrophages? They remove old cells, microbes and any particulate matter by the phagocytosis. So this is a picture of macrophage, a large nucleus, a large cell with abundant cytoplasm. You can also see the vesicles. There can be lysosomes to kill the bacteria, fungi, etc. 
the engulf material also you can see why this engulf material is by the phagocytosis so this kind of you can also see certain other cells also red blood cells other <coughs> leukocytes in the cytoplasm so this kind of macrophage can engulf almost anything monocytes after macrophage the another cell is monocyte due to the influence of adhesion molecules and chemotactic factors they migrate to the site of injury and undergo transformation i they get activated they increase in cell size increase in lysosomal enzymes with vacuoles suggestive of phagocytosis morphologically the cells are large flat appear pink in hematoxyl in eosinophil and called epithelioid macrophages this kind of cells are like epithelial cells their morphology is like epithelial cells squamous epithelial cells so they are called epithelioid cells that means they are like epithelial cells this macrophages secrete chemical mediators that is important in uh, inflammatory process so you can see the picture of monocyte and macrophage they have phagosomes they can have lysosomes a uh, large nucleus with abundant cytoplasm and you can also see the pseudopods pseudopodia are there you can also see the phagolysosomes now the chemical mediators in chronic inflammatory process is these are the chemical mediators acid and neutral proteases these are the present in lysosomal granules second is the complement components and coagulation factors that is secreted by the macrophages there can be reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide this is cytotoxic to microbes and tumor cells then can be arachidonic acid metabolites that is in neutrophils and macrophages prostaglandins causes vasodilatation and inhibits platelet aggregation thromboxane a2 causes vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation the other chemical mediators are cytokines mainly interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor tnf other growth factors that cause proliferation of the smooth muscle cells fibroblast and extracellular matrix they also regulate lymphocyte function growth activation differentiation stimulate hematopoiesis so these macrophages then die or pass off into the lymphatics interleukin 4 and interferon 8 induce macrophages to fuse and form large multinucleated cells and they are called foreign body giant cells so this is a picture microscopic picture of foamy macrophage you can see the uh, vacuoles in the cytoplasm uh, abundant cytoplasm and vacuolated cytoplasm so this is called foamy macrophage this is a picture of alveolar macrophages that you can find in sputum so these alveolar macrophages mainly uh, they are in lungs this is the epithelioid macrophages so you can see the morphology like epithelial cells again epithelioid macrophages morphology like epithelial cells again multinucleate epithelioid macrophage this is mast cell so the tissue macrophages or the monocytes they become the activated macrophages like a non immune activation or activated t cells now the responsible tissue injury factors are nitric oxide arachidonic acid metabolites toxic oxygen metabolized proteases neutral chemotactic factors coagulation factors and for the fibrosis growth factors that is pdgf fgf angiogenesis for angiogenesis 
FGF is important. There can be fibrogenic cytokines and remodeling polygenesis. The other cells <coughs> in the chronic inflammation. So lymphocytes, these are also important. T lymphocytes, these are the effector cells. Cell mediated immunity is there by the T lymphocytes. And uh, there can be helper and suppressor T lymphocytes, regulatory cells. The B lymphocytes are important for antibody production. Amine stimulus can activate a lymphocyte, non-immune or immune. Macrophages initially activate the lymphocyte by presenting process antigen fragments. These activate lymphocytes which produce mediators like interferon 5 which activates monocytes and macrophages. Activated macrophages release interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor which activate lymphocytes. In this way, both will stimulate each other till antigen is removed. The another important cell is plasma cell. Plasma cell is nothing but the activated B lymphocyte. And uh, they produce antibodies against the antigen at the inflammatory site. Eosinophils are also important. They are seen mainly in the immune reactions mediated by the IgE, immunoglobulin E, that mainly occurs in allergies and parasitic infection. Eosinophils, uh, they contain some granules, contain major basic protein, that is MBP, a highly charged cationic protein that is toxic to the parasites as well as it causes epithelial cell lysis. It is rich in acid phosphatase and specific peroxidase activity. There are mast cells. These mast cells are present in both acute and chronic inflammation. They have preformed histamine and arachidonic acid metabolites. There are also neutrophils. These neutrophils are seen in acute inflammation but sometimes they persist due to various causes like microbes, continuous mediator stimulation by macrophages then this is sometimes called acute and chronic inflammation or you can also call it subacute inflammation. So now what is giant cells? You can also see giant cells in inflammation, particularly in chronic inflammation you will find the giant cells. They are multinucleated cells, large cells, the size can be up to 40-50 micron. They can have 40-50 to 50 nuclei and formed by cytoplasmic fusion of the macrophages. So the multiple macrophages fuse together and they become one cell that is giant cell. So they have multiple nuclei. Foreign body giant cell. It is noticed around exogenous insoluble material. Uh, material can be talc, oil, silica, surgery, surgical sutures or endogenous substance like cholesterol or uric acid crystal. Numerous nuclei. You can find up to 100 nuclei in one foreign body type of giant cell. And these resemble uh, nuclei of macrophages. They are uniform in size, shape, scattered nuclei throughout the cytoplasm. Another particular type of giant cell that is called Langan's type of giant cell. This type of giant cell is mainly seen in tuberculous inflammation. Tuberculous inflammation is a particular type of chronic inflammation that is called granulomatous inflammation. And this granulomatous inflammation you will find Langan's type of giant cells. Now in this Langan's type of giant cell, nuclei are, are arranged in horseshoe shaped. They resemble that of the macrophages. So uniform nuclei, but they are arranged at the uh, border of the cell membrane and arranged in horseshoe shape. So this is foreign body giant cell. You can see the multiple nuclei, large cell, abundant cytoplasm, uniform nuclei. This is Langan's type giant cell. Thus nuclear arrangement is like horseshoe shape. This is again a Langan's giant cell. Again a Langan's giant cell. So another type of giant cell is tumor giant cell. And that is seen in malignant lesions like carcinoma and sarcoma. 
these are produced when there is rapid nuclear mitosis in malignant cell without any cytoplasmic division. The nuclei can be 2 to 5 centrally placed and look vacuolar. So this kind of uh, tumor giant cells are found in carcinoma liver and soft tissue sarcoma. So another tumor that is giant cell tumor of bone you can also find the multiple giant cells with multiple nuclei. These again are tumor giant cells. You can see the size and shape of the nuclei are not same. So there can be hyperchromasia, there can be uh, irregular nuclear membrane and the different size and shape of the nuclei. Another type of giant cell is Ashcroft giant cells. So these Ashcroft giant cells can have 2 to 5 central vesicular nuclei with basophilic cytoplasm. They are found in myocardial lesion of rheumatic heart disease. Uh, another type are osteoclasts. These are the physiological giant cells found in bones. They are multinucleated cells of mononuclear macro origin and responsible for the bond resorption. The nuclei are around 100 and benign looking. The nuclear number can be 100 of nuclei. So these are the osteoclast like giant, osteoclast giant cells, physiological giant cell. These are the ash of bodies found in rheumatic heart disease. Now there is particular type of cells that is called reed Sternberg cells, RS cell. That is mainly found in the Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is not pathognomonic for Hodgkin's lymphoma. You can also find it in other diseases. But they have the mirror image nuclei. It is a neoplastic reticulum cell. Uh, eosinophilic nucleoli surrounded by a clear halo with cytoplasm. Cytoplasm abundant and it is amphophilic. So this is a particular type of cell is reed Sternberg cell and you can find it in Hodgkin's lymphoma. So this is RS cell, mirror image of nuclei. Again, you can see the RS cell, mirror image nuclei. Another type of giant cell is Teuton giant cell. Here the nucleus surround a central zone of clear eosinophilic cytoplasm, but the peripheral portion of the cytoplasm looks foamy because of the lipid ingestion that is found in xanthoma. Teuton body giant cell found in xanthoma. This is again a Teuton giant cell. So this is a megakaryocyte as you all know megakaryocyte is a precursor of platelet and this is a physiological giant cell in found in bone marrow. Since it is your troboblast again a physiological giant cell you can find it in placenta megakaryocyte. This is a picture of megakaryocyte. Now, in the chronic inflammation, in certain diseases that can be in, uh, infectious or non-infectious, a particular pattern of inflammation is seen. That is called granulomatous inflammation. So it is a distinct chronic inflammation characterized by aggregates of activated macrophages that assume a squamous cell-like appearance. That's why they are called epithelioid cells. Epithelioid means they are like epithelial. Granuloma usually form where there is a persistent T cell response by microbes like tuberculosis, syphilis and in fungal infections or even to inert foreign bodies. Granulomas do not help to eradicate the causative agent but the formation of a granuloma effectively walls of the agent. The cells Macrophages come from tissues rather than blood and belong to the reticuloendothelial system. Whenever the macrophages find an insoluble material too large to angle by a single macrophage, they coalesce to form, to form giant cells. So the principal cell involved in the granulomatous inflammation are macrophages and lymphocytes. 
Necrophages can store the pathogenetic agent in the cytoplasm for indefinite periods. The normal macrophages are mobile, but once these macrophages have phagocytose insoluble or indigestible material, they lose their mobility and remain in place. The morphological hallmark of granulomatous inflammation are aggregates of epithelioid cells. So very important, epithelioid cells are the main cells you will find in granulomatous inflammation. Now the morphology of a granuloma. In hematoxylin eosin stain, granulomas are usually small, about less than 2 mm, containing collections of epithelioid cells frequently surrounded by a ream of lymphocytes. Epithelioid cells have abundant pink granular cytoplasm with indistinct cell boundaries. The lymphocytes secrete the cytokines responsible for ongoing macrophage activation. Later on, fibroblasts and connective tissue surround the granuloma. This is mainly due to cytokines secreted by the activated macrophages. Frequently, we also find multinucleated giant cells. The size of the giant cells can be 40 to 50 micron in diameter. The giant cells have a large cytoplasm with multiple nuclei and they form the fusion or the 20 or the more macrophages. In tuberculosis, we will find necrosis. The necrosis is mainly due to hypoxia and the free radical injury. But this necrosis is cheesy. The appearance of this, macro, uh, this necrosis is cheesy. So it is called caseous necrosis. So you will find caseous necrosis is in tuberculosis. So this is a picture of the epithelioid macrophage. Again, epithelioid macrophage. Now this is a granulomatous inflammation. You will find this kind of inflammation in tuberculosis. There is central caseous necrosis uh, surrounded by the aggregation of the epithelioid cells, lymphocytes. You can also see the giant multinucleated cell that is Langan's type of giant cell surrounded by the ream of the collar of the lymphocytes. Again, epithelioid cell. Now, causes of the granulomatous inflammation. So, the certain bacteria are responsible for the granulomatous inflammation. These are tuberculosis, leprosy, syphilis, cat scratch disease, parasites, cystosomiasis, in fungal infection like histoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, neoformans, blastomycosis. Certain in, uh, inorganic metals and dust can also cause the granulomatous inflammation. So, there can be granulomatous inflammation in silicosis and berylosis. Uh, foreign body giants, uh, foreign body type of material can also cause uh, granulomatous inflammation with the foreign body type of giant cells like suture, grafts, implants. And there can be uh, unknown conditions like in sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis can have the uh, granulomatous inflammation. So this is the acid fast bacilli stain that is called ZN stain and you can see the tubercle bacilli and you can find it in the cytoplasm of the macrophages. This is again a special stain for the tuberculous bacilli. Some of the MCQs for the chronic inflammation. The central figure in the chronic inflammation is so the answer is C, macrophage. It is the main cell in the chronic inflammation. Bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy showing non-caseating granulomas is most characteristic of the answer is B, sarcoidosis. You will find the non-caseating granulomas in sarcoidosis. Now the which chemical mediator aids in the optionalization in acute inflammation? That, that is the MCQ of the previous lecture. That is C3B. Answer is D, C3B. All the following vascular changes are observed in acute inflammation. Except decrease hydrostatic pressure, D. One of the following is not a granulomatous disease. The answer is, there is no, all in all these diseases you will find the granulomatous inflammation. Sarcoidosis, cat scratch disease, Hodgkin's disease and leprosy. So the answer is none. 
द मेजर बेसिक प्रोटीन इज फॉर्म बाय दैट इज द आंसर इज इोसिनोफिल डी द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स ऑफ हिस्टामिन द आंसर इज ए मास्ट सेल्स आंसर इज ए मास्ट सेल्स द लाइफ स्मान ऑफ न्यूट्रोफिल द आंसर इज सिक्स अवर्स द आंसर इज बी सिक्स अवर्स सो द रेफरेंस इज ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज रॉबिन्स बेजिक पैथोलॉजी एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड फ्रॉम द इंटरनेट थैंक यू इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल सी अबाउट द टिश्यू रिपेयर एंड वुंड हीलिंग